Okay, now it's recording. Hello, hi everybody. Welcome once more to isolation sessions. This is the third session I've decided to uh, put up on, on social media. Uh, it's going to be available afterwards on my YouTube channel, Abandoned Sector. Um, today's episode is, is a much shorter episode. It's, it's going to be 30 minutes. Um, I thought it would be a much snappier, easier format to digest. Um, we have... Uh, a presentation of Miroslav Tishi, uh, the legendary Czech photographer uh, whose life and work I'm going to be presenting to you soon. And we have a, uh, a special guest. Uh, we have Konstantinos Dukas, who is going to um, uh, discuss with me uh, about the challenges uh, and opportunities that exist uh, for, for social media, media managers uh, in this day and age. Uh, in these, um, uh, through this coronavirus pandemic, uh, and how do we approach branding, uh, branding for your uh, businesses, branding for your uh, brands, uh, the, the challenges and pitfalls, and, um, uh, and, and everything around it. Uh, without uh, further ado, um, Miroslav Tishi. Miroslav Tisi, this this enigmatic character, this this Czech legendary Czech photographer, uh, who was virtually unknown until the uh, until the nineties, where his uh, around that time his photography started becoming uh, more known. Uh, Miroslav Tisi, and I'm going to start showing you some slides of his uh, photography now. Uh, his uh, he was preoccupied with with women. Uh, he mostly photographed women, women in his uh, small Czechoslovak town of uh, Kuzhov, um, a very small town. This started uh, his, his artistic life as a painter uh, in, in the post-war period in, in Czechoslovakia. Uh, very soon he became something of a recluse. He became disenchanted with, with the Soviet socialist regime of the country and he decided to uh, and vent this, this angst, vent this frustration uh, with the political system through his um, somewhat deviant arts. Uh, and I'm saying deviant uh, because uh, of, of two key reasons. All of his uh, photography, uh, the vast majority of his photography, is, is extremely voyeuristic. As you can see, um, he's not approaching his subjects in, in a natural way. He's rather um, behaving like a stalker so to speak, um, you know, creeping up on his subject. It's usually women, sometimes it's couples in, in private moments, sometimes it's kind of women in bathing suits or in, or in private moments, usually stalking around the swimming pool of Kuzhov, um, using his extraordinary cameras. And that's the second thing that is uh, so special about his photography. Um, you can see here in the picture, these photos are from his friend, Harry Baxbaum, um, and you can see the type of cameras uh, TC used. It's not uh, a usual uh, kind of uh, uh, luxury kind of camera with uh, with amazing lenses, etc. It's a very uh, much uh, uh, kind of camera made out of scrap, as you can see. He used paper tubes. He used various cogs and lenses from glasses that he found in uh, rummaging through garbage cans and. Uh, with his uh, extraordinary knowledge of photography, he put it all together uh, and he created those funny, weird looking cameras, these kind of pinhole cameras uh, that enabled him to take these uh, very dreamlike images of, of women. Um, and not only that, uh, TC did not just approach uh, his subject with those weird cameras, uh, but he also 
uh, took the negatives and he uh, uh, mistreated those those photographic negatives, so to speak, uh, even after uh, taking uh, their photography with his weird cameras. He would take the negatives at home, uh, uh, develop the negatives in uh, any kind of uh, the most uh, careless manner, uh, spilling the chemicals here and allowing these to gather dust there and uh, sometimes kind of scratching them and writing on the back of photographs and leaving the negatives to dry outside in the rain and gather dust and be eaten by mice cutting off the edges, uh, improving those sometimes with ballpoint pens, etc., etc. And uh, it's, it's extraordinary how, uh, and I'm showing you the cameras again, how he has used these kind of weird cameras he constructed and he carried on this technique uh, even after post-processing to capture what? To capture his favorite subject, which was, was women, the women of Kuzov, um, women of, of all ages, women uh, virtually unknown to him and also oblivious to the fact that this uh, shabby old man who was approaching them with this kind of weird device in, in his hands was capable of even taking a snapshot of them. Uh, and this is why all of his images are have some something of uh, uh, this kind of raw uh, quality, something, you know, so they're, they're very kind of surrealist in a way. Um, and they show a snapshot of life in Czechoslovakia of the 70s, 80s, and the 90s uh, in a most kind of dreamlike and, and extraordinary way. Uh, this was uh, virtually unknown as a photographer through his lifetime. Uh, he was persecuted by, by authorities who tried to uh, prosecute him, as you can imagine, for voyeurism, for, for kind of stalking uh, his subjects. The truth is that uh, they were never able, they were never capable of uh, putting him in prison or stopping him because he was very subtle in his ways. Uh, he didn't really uh, hurt anyone. He didn't really take, you know, his photographs are risque, but at the end of the day, um, he took those from afar, he never approached his subjects, and he never really infringed, let's say, on their privacy. Uh, he has, however, managed, uh, through his extraordinary art, um, to capture these private moments, uh, giving them this kind of wonderful, uh, fluffy, uh, uh, kind of uh, surreal quality. And uh, this is why uh, his art uh, has a very, very... Uh, favorite place in my heart. Uh, I think it's significant, uh, you know, one of his quotes, uh, which uh, I come back to uh, every now and then. Uh, once he said that, first of all, uh, if you want to be famous, you have to have a bad camera. Uh, and the second quotation uh, in tandem is, if you want to be famous, you must do something more badly than anyone else in the entire world. And I guess uh, this is very much uh, what TC has, has done here. Uh, he has done something uh, very badly in an offhand way. Uh, he has done something, uh, yes, he has treated his negatives with, with brutality, uh, and therefore he's kept uh, his uh, uh, work uh, real and zeitgeisty. Uh, this is Miroslav, Miroslav TC. If you're interested in photography, uh, if you're interested in these uh, wonderful arts, uh, then don't hesitate to look him up uh, on uh, anywhere on Google. He has literally uh, managed to get hundreds of photographs every day uh, for a period of over 20 years. Uh, so there's plenty of TC to, to go around. Um, I, I hope uh, you're going to very soon share uh, your interest is, uh, in this extraordinary work. Miroslav TC. And uh, amazing as it is, uh, as this is, and I hope you're going to pick up on, on TC's work and, and uh, kind of follow it up on, on the internet. Uh, we have here, and very soon I'm going to present to you, uh, Konstantinos Dukas. Konstantinos is, uh, uh, is, is a friend. Uh, he's an expert, uh, as uh, I want to say, in, in branding and, and social media. And he's here today to... Uh, take us through uh, a, a discussion, let's say, a conversation uh, that we're going to have together about branding and uh, how we can keep branding relevant in these times of crisis uh, where, you know, the whole world seems to come to a, uh, to a grinding halt, to a stop. Uh, 
should brands then continue to, to exist in the same ways as, as before? Uh, just uh, some of the questions that uh, we're going to uh, be discussing with Konstantinos Dukas. Uh, good evening, Konstantinos. Uh, hi, uh, Ivan. Thank you for having me. And uh, happy name day, by the way. <laughs> you're, you're very welcome. Uh, that's a very, very uh, good thing to say. But yes, it's supposed to be my name day. Uh, thank you very much for uh, for for uh, coming to discuss live uh, with us today and sharing your uh, expertise in in uh, branding and and social media management. Thank you for having me uh, on the isolation sessions. Uh, first of all, I want to say that I don't consider myself an expert. Oh. I just have a lot of life experience, business experience, and I consider my, uh, myself a, 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 an enthusiast of uh, all things uh, marketing and uh, let's say here branding, you know, uh, social media and mostly here digital marketing that is very relevant uh, these days that's uh it's it's a, it's a very it's, it's a wonderful and if you allow me it's, it's a kind of humble way to look at it i guess uh you know the, the difference between uh you know expertise and uh and, and being extremely familiar with uh, with something is you know is, is humility and we this show is about is about humility is about uh, people exactly. who people who are very well versed in in what they do, and I know that you are, uh, regardless of what you say. Uh, and we are sharing it freely. We're not trying to sell anything. We're just kind of giving uh, our our knowledge and our kind of shared. Uh, I think we have 40, 40, We're giving value, yeah. 40 years of experience between us uh, in in kind of travel and and branding and marketing uh, knowledge. So how? Uh, what is the situation with brands now? I mean, what are they going through and uh, how do they deal, uh, how do they tackle the crisis currently? I mean, this is a huge uh, shakeup right now, especially for the so-called uh, first war. Um, the first world right now, which is mainly the US, Europe, and the Far East, you know, North Asia, um, they go through a systemic change. It is a huge earthquake um, in the sense that uh, people have to be locked down for weeks, if not months, and this hugely affects economic activity. And since we live in the age of, of capitalism, uh, the slowing down of the economic activity is something which is so far detrimental. Um, I think it is hard to say what will happen because we don't know exactly when this thing will end. Some say weeks, some say months, but for sure the articles and the forecast which uh, we have been reading lately say that this will go on and will affect uh, our lives for the for for maybe several months uh, or maybe years to come wow. um, so um, i think it is early to say what uh, will happen but i i instead of saying that I am a specialist or an expert in something, I consider myself an observer. So I do uh, observe and simply monitor how um, brands um, act, uh, stand, um, behave uh, during those times. Uh, so how yeah. so how have brands uh, kind of reacted to this COVID virus? I mean, I'm I'm reading the news and I'm trying not to, but you know, kind of reading the news, I can see that that some brands are you know all they kind of uh, let's say uh, uh, broadcast is uh, about uh, it has to do with job cuts. Uh, some brands, some other brands broadcast. Um, um, you know, kind of some changes in the way of, uh, you know, operations. Some other brands are ready to assist and convert 
uh, for example, some big kind of fashion brands, I was very happy to see their season operations in some of the factories. They're not going to be producing, uh, I'm not going to name the brands, but they're not going to be producing perfume, for example, but they're going to be producing uh, kind of hand sanitizer, which is, I think, a very good um, a kind of way to kind of convert, you know, their, their activity and, and offer something. It does this have a... Does this have like a, a marketing and advertising subtext to it, or is it just kind of pure and adulterated contribution to society, or is it a little bit of both? I think it is actually a little bit of both. Um, yes, of course, um, some factories need to survive, so they change their manufacturing um, ways. But uh, having said that, we live in an age of empathy. And I think that empathy is now the key word for branding. Um, I think the brands that, uh, that uh, will survive this era uh, are the ones who have built and uh, sustained a relations with the communities. Uh, be it the local, the national, or the international community who have helped, uh, who have actually, you know, given value uh, without expecting something uh, in return. So uh, I think the more empathy you show, the better. Uh, without naming names, I mean, the ones the ones of us, you know, who live here in the UK, I would have seen or heard that a major food retailers uh, or, let's see here, um, um, coffee shops, they are offering uh, free coffee to the NHS stuff. And I think the people who actually buy at those shops regularly uh, would certainly uh, appreciate this. So it is something that uh, see, that uh, seriously makes sense and uh, shows that you are part of the of um, of let's say here the community and you are part of what is happening and that you are doing your best to help. Okay. Uh, brands doing, of course. brands doing their bit, yeah, and right. that's uh, that's kind of a wonderful thing to hear. So, just to put it all in context, I mean, this this thing has has taken us all by surprise. There's there's no doubt about it. It has taken people by surprise, has taken government by surprise, it has taken businesses especially by surprise, and everybody is kind of reacting in a little bit of a hurly burly way. But very soon. We all going to have to kind of, you know, just kind of take it, evaluate it and kind of run with it. And if there was, you know, a, a kind of some, some kind of advice that you would give to, to each brand out there, what would you recommend for, for brands to stop doing? What would you recommend for brands to change in, in the ways? And what would you recommend for brands to continue uh, as, as it was before? Uh, in terms of stopping, uh, I would say uh, stop uh, giving value and expect something in return. Um, I think it is now the time that you must give and not expect something. Uh, because, you know, let's see here, let's see here, you know, what is branding? You know, uh, branding is. Um, the perception or the image that someone has on his or her mind about you, about your company, uh, uh, or about your product, right? And this image is built from, from the actions that you take and the actions that you do. And um, they might not buy from you or use you now, but they might do so in six months or in a year's time or even later. But making mem um, but um, uh, I would say here making 
make memorable experiences um, and things that would stay in their minds and uh, build the image of your brand uh, for now and for the future is something really, yes, really essential. So, uh, yes, I think that would actually mostly here uh, um, answer your question about, you know, um, how they should behave. So they should keep uh, actually now building their brand uh, in some sort of uh, way that shows empathy, that uh, shows the consideration for the community, that shows understanding about what people go through. And um, it it might not be something that will uh, bring you money right now, but people will will remember this time because people uh, buy and and remember with um, by using the emotions, right? So I think the more emotional your your actions are the better people will remember you uh, in the future wow that's a, that's a great snippet and this is actually something that uh you know we see brands doing um uh, a lot more in the last few days than, than i've ever seen before and i agree with you it is actually very important to now it's the time to give uh as a brand uh, to people to give back to the community give kind of something that that is free we all have time uh trading has all but ceased uh, everywhere in all parts of the market in in every community and now it's the time that people are uh, you know many of us uh you know are you know potentially in in kind of not short term travel perhaps but long term we don't know what's happened uh, what's going to happen what's yeah, going nobody on knows. nobody knows and this is now for the brands uh, you know this. Uh, you know governments and uh, great institutions to to give this kind of glimmer of hope uh, to everyone out there that we're here for you. Um, you know we exist. We you know we used to be and we are profitable companies and we're gonna uh, you know be exist after the crisis and we're here to support you in your hour of need in your time of need, not just when uh, you know we're after your money and after your wallets. Yes. Exactly. So that's a that's a very that's a very very good uh, uh, that's a great observation observation. That's that's great. Would you say that um, when this crisis ends, uh, if this ends, if this crisis ends, I mean, exactly. you, know, you know, when is this crisis going to end? Will will things go back to in terms of branding and marketing uh, the way they were before? The crisis, or are there going to be some elements that are going to remain, uh, you know, forever changed by, but what we're going through right now? I think it is still hard to give a yes or no answer on this one. Uh, it depends how far and how much this would last. I mean, uh, China is now out of the bunkers, let's say, and the people now after months starting going out and starting visiting shops and starting visiting, you know, restaurants and starting going back to their jobs. So we still need to see how people would feel and how they will consume, whether they will be more environmentally friendly, um, actually whether some of them will turn, uh, let's say, vegan or, you know, and how they will change their behavior. It is still very early days to say, but my assumption is um, that, that empathy and understanding will be uh, very, very dominant uh, for the months and years to come. And this also means that uh, uh, firms, you know, companies and brands should also adapt um, their ways to that. Wonderful. 
it this is uh, this is truly something that might have um, you know a cataclysmic kind of effect in the way we do business and in the way we we uh, kind of run our day to day lives. Are there really uh, any? And I'm thinking now. You know, generally, I'm thinking in travel terms rather, because I am, I, of mm -hmm. course, explorability is about travel, and we are. I'm doing guided tours, and I'm uh, performing, uh, you know, kind of, uh, kind of broader uh, international tours that have to do with history, architecture, and of course, uh, at the moment, uh, me as well as uh, pretty much everybody else who's in in tourism or travel uh, is is kind of tools down, and we are out of our ordinary business. Uh, and to a great degree, what, what we're doing here tonight is uh, kind of, uh, it's an exploratory, exploratory way uh, to see what, how we can kind of convert and change our business and perhaps uh, kind of try to imagine or visualize how our business are going to be transformed in the next weeks and, and months and years to come. What would you, if, if we think then along those travel terms, uh, if we think about cities that are saturated by travel and tourism, uh, Resorts in in Greece and Turkey in Cyprus in in uh, the Caribbean uh, or in the Indian subcontinent. If we think about cities like Barcelona and Venice, uh, devastated yes. uh, by by the COVID virus, uh, and if we think about those those places as they were a few months ago, uh, at the peak of their kind of of of, of 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 international global tourism, with millions and millions of visitors every year piling one on top of the other, visiting in droves, sometimes even kind of pushing locals out, pushing locals away and endangering yeah. kind of local uh, sustainability. Are we going to see a return to this as soon as the crisis is over? Are we going to be such, such kind of, uh, uh, kind of, uh, are we going to have such a short memory or people are going to approach those very populous uh, and very saturated destinations with a different mindset? I think it is... Uh, uh, once again, I think it is hard to say. And the reason why is because when we know exactly when this thing will end, so we will know how many sort of airlines will survive, uh, how many, um, you know, uh, how many hotels will uh, reopen. Um, so we are not sure exactly of, let's say here, the capacity that will be be uh, available at each um, destination. But I think it will be down to the local or the national authorities of how many people they would allow in. I think I think now it is it is actually here the um, it is a new and it is a fantastic uh, opportunity to go for a model of uh, sustainable tourism that uh, would be, let's say, you know, sustainable for the long term, and uh, that would still uh, make money for the local shops, the local hotels, the local companies. But um, without being here in the detriment of the whole of the destination or the local inhabitants. So I think uh, it is time to find the right balance. Wow, absolutely. And uh, it, it is very perceptive indeed. And, uh, you know, I also believe that this is uh, something that's, uh, you know, some things are going to change. You know, beginning from the fact that uh, we possibly all will be averse in kind of congregating in kind of super populated and uh, kind of massively touristy places. Uh, maybe we're going to develop some sort of kind of phobia, so to speak, out of this kind of COVID uh, virus, a, a subconscious thing, but uh, I think it's going to be there. And uh, perhaps this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity to create new destinations that are less saturated, uh, new uh, kind of uh, new travel industries that are less uh, kind of mass uh, in in scale and 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 mindset. And uh, we're going to uh, 
uh, achieve exactly. more, uh, new sustainability. Uh, special interest, exactly. exactly. That's, a, that's a beautiful thought. I know that uh, so far, uh, and uh, this, is, this is, let's say, our closing question, I'm, I'm not uh, going to take up uh, much more of your valuable time. Uh, I know you have avoided so far to make any predictions. You say very carefully that uh, you know, we don't know what's going to happen, we don't know what's going to be. But if I would kind of ask you to make one prediction or two predictions, let's say, about the future, uh, is there something that uh, you in your experience Experience can see happening uh, in in the world of branding or in the world of travel uh, in in the next few months and, and years to come. Something that's going to change the game, something that's going to change things uh, around, and something that perhaps we haven't seen much before, but we're going to begin seeing much more in in the future uh, on on the back of this global crisis. Uh, here, I would say, regardless of the industry we are going to see a much more digital activity. So um, those companies and those uh, brands who have not uh, embraced um, the whole, let's say, you know, digital world so far, and um, they are not um, very much active on the social media front, um, I think that this will change uh, actually rapidly and to a large extent. Uh, and the main reason behind that is that people who now stay home, they get uh, more and more acquainted with, um, with let's say, you know, uh, with the new um, technologies, you know, digital uh, media and uh, this means on the day after, uh, they would be able to uh, use them more widely. And with uh, regards to, the, let's say here, the tourism and the hospitality uh, industry, um, I, think, I think here the global activity shall not cease. Uh, but uh, you are likely from the southern hemisphere that was not uh, so far uh, so much affected from the coronavirus uh, rather than uh, let's say the north south let's say divide the, the, which is here the british or the germans you know visiting mallorca uh, for the summer or i mean that shall change uh, for sure um but I think you are likely to see um, more and more uh, last minute uh, bookings uh, because I think we will see less of um, um, tour operator activity uh, the way we know it so far and will be more the, I would say here, the digital uh, um channels, you know, the OTAs um, that will be, uh, yes, I would say here, very much dominant the day after. Fantastic. So, yeah, this is my, yeah, you know, my prediction. Fantastic. Fantastic predictions. Ladies and gentlemen, Constantinos Lucas, thank you very much uh, for, uh, for, for being on board with us today. A, uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, have a very good night. See you later. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Wow. Some uh, some amazing uh, some amazing insight from uh, Constantino. Some amazing from photography from uh, Miroslav Tisi. And uh, right here, another episode of Isolation Sessions uh, is about to end. Uh, please follow my social media. Explorabilia uh, is the name. Uh, and of course, uh, the next live is going to be announced on, on Facebook uh, a few days from now with much more interesting topics and content. Uh, so follow us, be there, and see you soon. Good night. Okay. My man. After that. Ha 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 ha.